they admitted that we showed the possibility of a second gun person, but we didn't show who it was. We showed the possibility of mind control, but we didn't show who did it. That's not our job. Our job is to, to raise the doubt. It's the state's responsibility then to figure out who did it. We applied to the Supreme Court. We were rejected. We've exhausted all our legal recourses here. The only case, the only way that we, what we could succeed on is if we had a civil case and we could ask for an evidentiary hearing. But that's going to cost a lot of money and we just don't have it. After they blocked us for a year of seeing Sirhan, we finally went to Cochrane for the first time and saw him for two days. And I have a, my wife and I have an apartment in San Francisco and we live in Boston area. So I was flying from Fresno back to San Francisco to stay overnight. And in my bags I had all the Bernie Diamond uh, oh, video cassettes and a Sony Walkman. And uh, I get on a 12-seater plane with one other passenger and I watch the bags get put on the plane. And I wait for an hour for my bags at San Francisco airport and I go up to a woman from United Airlines and say, where are the bags for such and such a plane? And she says they came on carousel for the commuter carousel 45 minutes ago. I said, no, I've been waiting at the commuter carousel for an hour. They never came in. So I filed a missing bag report and I get the bags back four hours later in my apartment. They've all been searched and gone to and they left some of the tapes running in the tape recorder. But that was just the beginning. What happened from there is that um, the following week I was teaching a clinical course on treating attachment disorders in children in St. Louis. It's 11 o'clock at night. And my friends, a couple who are sponsoring me, who are friends of mine, witnessed this. I'm waiting for my bags to come in and I watch a woman from United Airlines take my bags and walk off with them. So I race after her and say, you're taking my bags. And she says, these bags are be re to be rerouted to the military base in San Diego. And I said, no, we have a problem here. You see, I have bag tags and they match. And they belong to me and what you're doing. I don't care if you work for the airlines, you're stealing my bags. Give me my bags back. And she says, no, I'm rerouting them. And I said, I'm going to start screaming and you're going to have a security breach and you're going to have state police and homeland security here and you're going to have to explain why you're stealing my bags unless you tell me who gave you these orders. And sure enough, in front of my friend, she says, looks on the clipboard and says, all bags associated with the Kennedy party would be rerouted to the military base. That's not subtle. For the next two years, every time I got on a plane, which is about every two weeks, my bags were stolen. That's a violation of search and seizure rights. Then I had five tax audits. And every time I get a different tax, tax audit and a different IRS agent. So I had a tax lawyer working with me. And he called up a number of times to negotiate some settlement with them. What they wanted, the last tax audit, was original receipts at the end of the year. They wouldn't take credit card summaries for Schedule C receipts. I said, that's ridiculous. Nobody's going to do that in this country. So finally, we, my tax attorney is caught talking with an IRS agent, and the IRS agent says to him in confidence, he says, look, I don't understand that we've audited your guy four times. We never find anything. He's, he's, uh, he's honest. This makes no sense to me. So he calls up my attorney the next day and says, I don't know why, but your, your client has a tag on his account by a top U.S. Treasury Department official that we should harass him as much as possible within the boundaries of the law for the rest of his life. I just got my fifth tax audit. It's been 11 years now of harassment. Then we submitted the case to the Ninth Circuit under new evidence. The law says that they have to act in 60 days. It took three and a half years before they denied their appeal. We sent it to the Supreme Court and we caught the Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court in a lie. The brief that we sent in, they wrote us back and said, denied, reviewed such and such a day and denied, except that the date that they reviewed it was two months before we sent in the brief. They can't explain that. So what kind of person has the power in this country that they can make a phone call, violate a, a upstanding citizen's search and seizure rights, put a tag on his IRS account for the rest of his life and get the Ninth Circuit and the Supreme Court to violate its own rules? That's scary to me. I don't know what this is all about, but certainly we're exposing something here that needs to be exposed because I had the illusion that we actually had a democracy in this country and I think it's worth fighting for and passing it down to the next generation to our kids. It's still worth fighting for. We had something precious in this country and we pissed it away. I want it back. How you doing, Mr. Saran? Good afternoon, John. Have a seat right there. Thank you.
This is a subsequent number 13 parole consideration hearing for Sir Hans. Sir Hans, and the inmate was received on 52369 from uh, Los Angeles County. The inmate received a term uh, originally of the death sentence, which was reduced in August 16, 1971, to life with the possibility of parole. I wanted to jump off the, across the table a couple of times, and only one attorney can talk, so Bill Pepper did the talking. But I had to almost sit on my hands a few times because I was just so mad. And, and his parole was denied. The panel has reviewed all the information received from the public and all relevant information that was before us today and have concluded the prisoner is not yet suitable for parole and would pose an unreasonable risk of danger or threat to public safety if released from prison. And I think he spoke very eloquently in 2011. Um, he apologized for being there. He apologized for anything he had done. But he couldn't, by then he was beginning to realize that he didn't think he did it. So how could he admit something that he's got no recollection of? And for him to get out, the parole board wants him to say, yes, I did it. And he can't because he's got no recollection. So then in 2016, Sirhan told me, I can't do it. I, I, I can't take the humiliation anymore. I'm not going to appear. And I told him that Paul Schrade was going to be there. And he said to me, Laurie, you've said that to me before. And I said, no, this time it's for real. So finally he said yes. Paul spoke eloquently. I love Paul. He's such a brilliant man. And he has given so much effort into, uh, into not only trying to help Sirhan, but to find what happened to his friend, Senator Kennedy. He was appalled at the way they treated Sirhan in that hearing. If you just look at the physical evidence, if you look at the ballistics, if you look at the autopsy report, there's no way that Sirhan could have shot the senator. So even if you don't believe in the Manchurian candidate aspect of this, but you just look at the hard, cold facts, Sirhan did not kill the senator. And Paul felt guilty that he hadn't come forward sooner. Because with Paul Schrade being part of this, we had more press than we would have gotten without. But Paul did say to Sirhan, I'm sorry, I should have been here sooner. And Paul does feel guilty about that. But he, but he shouldn't, because he's, he's done more than just about anybody trying to get to the truth. Sirhan was deeply touched by what, what Paul had to say. When he went to try to shake Sirhan's hand at the end, they wouldn't let him. Was Sirhan surprised that his parole was denied? No. Was I surprised? No. I was angry. And then after the hearing, they ransacked his cell. When he went upstairs to his cell, his bed was on the floor and all his personal belongings were scattered around his cell. And that's not done by an inmate, that's done by a guard. Because he has his own individual cell. Why? Why are they trying to intimidate him? I don't, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get Sirhan to another parole hearing because he feels so humiliated being there. And then they intimidate him prior to the parole hearing, and then they intimidate him afterwards. And, and he says after a parole hearing, he just goes into a, like a, a funk for, for days. Uh, how, he, how he has kept his spirits up all this time, I could just say it's his, it's his belief in God. What is your favorite book of the New Testament? Oh, I think the whole Bible is my favorite book, but I would, okay. say, I would say maybe, maybe Psalms. I like That's the, Psalms. the Old Testament. The New Testament is the New Testament. I like that expression in uh, in, in in Luke Luke four forty sixteen okay. to, to so twenty three. Okay. I like that very much because it 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 instills and renew, it renews my hope that sooner or later I will be found suitable for parole and get out okay. because Christ promised that to all, all right. the believers. I've had the most contact with Sir Hannah over the last eleven years and anybody outside of prison. Um, I've come very fond of him and protective, because he doesn't have, he doesn't really have anybody else to, to, to do that for him. People think that Sirhan's a monster, or, or that he's already dead. For some reason, people think that because he's uh, from the Middle East, he's a Muslim. He's not, he's a devout Christian. And, and at one of the parole boards, they asked him, well, you have a Quran, why? As if it was a crime to have a Quran. And he said, because it helps me stay fluent in Arabic. After 9-11, he was put into uh, solitary confinement for six years. He said to me, the towers hadn't even turned to dust, and they took me out. How many years had he been 
under custody of the state of California and they thought he was involved with 9-11? Ludicrous. There's really no justice. And if there's no justice in a case that's so well known, I'm concerned about what happens to the average person. They're going to keep Sirhan in jail until he dies. That's their intent. And, and he should have been paroled in 1980. 82, I think. The state psychologists do not think he's a threat. He's had no problems in jail. He's been a, a model prisoner. Dan has done psychological tests on him that match the tests that were done by this, uh, the um, prison psychologist, and yet he's still being held. What, what, what more work is there that you need to do with Sirhan in the prison, if any? I don't think he's going to remember much more than that I've been able to get out, out of him for the last 11 years. I think the issue here is trying to appeal to the proper authorities to open up the case of a man who's been in jail for 48 years for something he didn't do. Sirhan will not push anybody in front of the bus. When we talk to him about the, the polka dot dress girl having a part, he defends her. He's getting to the realization now that somebody had to be involved, but he's not pointing a finger at anybody because as he says, I don't know. And I don't think he wants done to somebody what was done to him. He believes that it's a possibility that somebody hypnotized him or somebody did something to him for this to have happened. I know that sounds strange because when you talk about the Manchurian candidate, people don't buy it. And I don't understand why, because there's enough proof out there now that the government was involved in, in experiments like that. So if, if that was done, why is it so hard to believe that Sirhan couldn't have been a Manchurian candidate? So what's left to do with Sirhan? What more work can you do with him? I need to get the story out now so that people will begin to look into it. Uh, I think we know a lot. I think that it's clear that Sirhan was not the sole assassin. Uh, he's innocent of that. He was there to be a distractor and to take the rap. Uh, I think we know that there was a cover-up that both the LAPD chief of police and the DA's office participated in. Uh, I think we know that the Mafia had some involvement in this, and J. Edgar Hoover had some direct involvement in it, but it goes far beyond Hugh Hoover if he was also killed. So how far up it goes, the further up you go, the less the paper trail. But I think that uh, what should happen is the proper law enforcement agents should be involved in investigating this and reopening it. The prison won't allow a video interview of him. We could do an audio via telephone. But as he said to me in June, he said, Laurie, I've already said everything I have to say. I don't have anything else to add because I don't remember. And he goes, and I trust you to speak on my behalf. Sirhan now works in the kitchen. He basically stays by himself. He said he used to read a lot, but he doesn't read much anymore. He listens to a radio, he's got a TV, and he tries to exercise. People think that you get paid for doing this. I don't get paid. Um, money comes out of my pocket, and I spend time on this that I could be investing in something else. I gave my word to Muneer and Sirhan, not that we'd win, but that I wouldn't give up. And over the years, I've I'm fond of Sirhan, but I really look upon Muneer as a friend. He's a really great guy. And when people, when people see this, they don't understand that it's not just the Kennedy family that suffered, the Sirhan family. I mean, Muneer, this has been 50 years of Muneer's life. And he's the last relative that Sirhan has. Does it impact Muneer? Greatly. So two families have suffered. Two families have lost a family member. Yes, the senator is dead. Um, but Sir hound has been incarcerated for 50 years. Um, and I, I gave my word, and I just think that you're as good as your word, and I'm not going to give up. I would say that personally I never expected in a million years that I would be attacked by my own government for my investigation in this case. That's been the hardest pill to swallow. But I'm feisty. I'm not about to roll over and play dead because people intimidate me. I think that this country had a precious democracy. I want to keep it going.